Hey guys, welcome to a new video. About one and a half years ago, I made this video about wanting to replace my current heating system based on Honeywell's Evo Home with something else self-built. Well, some things went well, some things didn't, but let's talk about that a bit. And let's take a look at one of the newest Xiaomi sensors, which, if I hold the right side up, is very interesting because this one only costs $4 a piece and still gives you BLE based or Bluetooth based temperature and humidity sensing. First off, this is going to be a bit of a long video since it includes a tutorial part and I want to do my story. I have included jump links in the video description, so if you want to skip the story part or some other part, just feel free to do so and check out the jump links, well, down there. So basically, the premise of the previous video is that I wanted to replace my crappy Honeywell Evo home system. I think their system can work okay when you only have heating, but once you throw a heat pump that's capable of doing heating and cooling into the mix, it really can't handle that very well. Uh, for all of <laughs> for going into that, watch that video. I mean, yeah, let's not get into that again. So the first step to replacing that Evo Home System was getting temperature sensing per room into Home Assistant, and then later design a control system for the valves of the underfloor heating and cooling system. Well, that first part worked out great. And while lots of you have asked since, I did put some work into getting relay boards for the valves and making a working or sort of working sketch in node red to control it all. And while well, it kind of stranded there, some of my projects get stuck like that. Sometimes sadly, I only have so much time and sometimes have to choose to work on other stuff or just have more interest at the time, but that doesn't mean it's dead. I still plan to replace it all at some point. So let's leave the heating control out of it for now. We just want multi-room temperature and humidity sensing into Home Assistant. One and a half years ago, I did this using Xiaomi BLE sensors connected to a few ESP32s running ESP Home. Uh, th these guys, you might remember those. I already have a bunch of ESP32s in the house, so receiving all Bluetooth signals was easy in that regard. This way of using distributed ESPs also allows me to get data from all the sensors all around the house since no one base station or sensor near my server would be able to receive all those signals. And I know people are going to comment, what about Zigbee or Z-Wave or whatever? Sure, if you have Zigbee stuff already, that's a fine choice. I don't, and like Wi-Fi and ESP Home, so that works great for me. Since the last video though, Xiaomi has introduced some new sensors which are very interesting, especially as I showed you Real quick, this $4 one. ESP Home supports these now, and let's take a closer look at those in a minute. Let's first talk about why I'm using a pre-built sensor and not a DIY solution, for instance, built on an ESP8266 or an ESP32. Well, I generally am all for DIY solutions. I mean, I make my, uh, my here's one, my, my Queen LED boards and, and stuff like that, and you know, so I'm all for DIY, but I have two rules and it needs to at least adhere to one. The DIY version is either cheaper or has much better functionality than what can be store-bought. And while a self-built DIY solution for this purpose kind of fails on both, to be honest, those Xiaomi sensors, even this type, can be had for about $10 or now, <laughs> uh, what's the right way up? I don't remember. We're now $4 and they have a very high quality pre-calibrated temperature and humidity sensor, a screen and are battery optimized. You're not going to be able to do that for a DIY version for that price. Not for the $10, but certainly not for the $4. So in my opinion, it makes sense getting the sensors uh, as a pre-built solution, which we can slightly hack in and use it combined with ESP Home and still make it a sort of DIY solution, but using pre-built sensors. And well, over the years, that has proven to be a very well-functioning system. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. 
comparing these two again, uh, this is one of the original sensors, this one here, and uh, that's still the type I use the most. It costs about $10 and it uses a AAA battery. And I've had about 12 of these running for, well, one and a half years now. And their projected battery life of one year plus is absolutely true. It depends a bit on the amount of temperature changes and such, but I think I have some sensors which still have the original battery in them from when I deployed them. Then I also have one or two of the e-ink versions and now a bunch of their new $4 versions. But before we do a little tutorial, let's take a look, as I mentioned earlier, how this looks in Home Assistant and basically what the end result is like. Okay, what we're looking at is my production Home Assistant and I have a tab here where I gather all my temperature data. It's split into several gatherings of sensors such as hallways, bedrooms or other rooms. It works quite easy on the PC interface or the web interface of Home Assistant, but also works perfectly in the mobile app. Next to showing all the numbers, you can also click on a room and view the graph of the last 24 hours. Now, while looking there, we also see some other interesting data. Per sensor, you can see minutes, seconds ago that the last update occurred. We'll get back to that a bit later. I also have some graphs here to get a nice overview of the last four hours and the past day. Now, I don't want to look here for very long, but one thing I wanted to show you is my humidity and battery tab. There I have some graphs for the humidity, and I don't really look at that data a lot, but I do use it in some of my automations. Check my uh, video about my bathroom ventilation here. That's still working and is awesome. Something else that's interesting here is the battery graph and more important, the Xiaomi battery below 20% part. That has some simple code in it, which checks all the battery values from the Xiaomi sensors. And if one is below 20%, I can see it here, so I can replace it at some point. I should really make an automation or an alert out of this at some point, but you know. Okay, okay, enough about that and onto this new sensor. I just wanted people who are new to this topic to see, well, how it will look in the end in Home Assistant. So, the main topic of this video is this new $4 temperature and humidity sensor. It's been available for a while now, but sadly, Xiaomi has changed their way their sensors worked. For a long time now, this original version I used, and for instance, the e-ink versions work with ESP Home without having to do much special and they just broadcast their values over BLE and we could just pick that up. But sadly, Xiaomi has started to lock down their hardware for us Home Assistant people, forcing their apps and clouds on us. For instance, with this new $4 sensor, they introduced an encryption key, making it harder to use these type of sensors like what we're doing. Bastards, why? Don't you want to sell this thing? How valuable is locking us into your ecosystem and trying to get all our data? I mean, <coughs> okay, okay. Different topic, but it really gets me going. So yeah, different topic. Let's just, let. I just really don't understand. Let me buy these things. I want to buy these things and use them the way I want to. Anyway, uh, <laughs> So, right, let's take a look at these sensors because we can use them now anyway. So, hey. Recently, another YouTuber came out with a video on how to hack these sensors and optionally even replace the current firmware on them with a custom version with more options and no encryption key. All gone and all done right from your phone with a few clicks. Got you anyway, Xiaomi. We love your hardware, but don't want your software. Just just give us the sensors. Okay, okay. So, first, a huge shout out. I did not do any of the research to make this possible. That's all Aaron Christopher. I hope I said that name correctly. Please watch his video too. And maybe if you're really loving it, subscribe to his channel or donate something to his PayPal. He really spent a lot of, t of his own time making this possible. So whatever you do, just give him a thanks. And I just wanted you guys to know where this came from. The optional firmware I mentioned is really nice because it also gives us manual control over how often the device reports, for instance, allowing you to choose between 
battery life or update frequency. Okay, so let's hack one of these and add them to Home Assistant. There's going to be a few pieces of hardware that you need. To make a temperature sensing node, you need an ESP32 to receive the Bluetooth signal. I have a few of those in my house anyway, and I need about three of them to basically get enough coverage over the layout of my house. Any ESP32 will do, but I generally advise using one of these two models. These are now about four to five dollars a piece, and they each have a micro USB plug. So any simple phone charger, old phone charger you have, whatever will do well, with a short micro USB cable. So yeah, if you have an old charger, uh, if not, I'll have these ESP32s, a cable and a decent charger that has no problems running for <laughs> years and years. Um, in the description, uh, in the end, that whole setup is about $10 in total. So make sure to check that out or the uh, linked blog article about this whole setup. Next, you will need one or more of these temperature sensors. I've run up to six from a single ESP32, and in my opinion, range is fairly decent. Let's say if your Bluetooth speaker can connect, the same distance will work for these sensors. And well, they use a lot lower data rate and amount of data, so probably a bit further even. So the fifth thing you'll only need uh, temporarily, and that is, well, your phone. Uh, this is what you're going to use to find the bind key, that's the encryption key Xiaomi now uses, or to upload the new firmware. And well, then you can use these sensors in ESP Home like we did all the other sensors before it. Oh. Before I forget, once you're done watching this video and you go down to the description section, if you like my content, make sure to press that subscribe button and maybe give this video a like. That's always really appreciated. Okay, tutorial time. Let's first hack this little sensor. Using your phone, go to the following GitHub address. I'll uh, show it on the screen, description, blog article, you know. Once you're there, download the etc underscore thermometer dot bin file to your phone. Once that is done, scroll down and open the web tool. This web page allows us to find the bind key and flash the models with the new firmware, all done directly from our phone. How brilliant is that? By the way, if this page doesn't work for you like I'm showing, try to open it in the mobile Chrome browser. I'm using a Galaxy S20 Plus and on there it worked perfectly. Once you're on that page, Tick the Hide Unsupported checkbox and hit the Connect button to select the sensor from the pop-up. The $4 sensor is listed as LYWSD03MMC. If you have multiple, it will be hard to identify which one is which at this stage. So either turn all others off, put them further away, or just pick one and hit Pair. Once connected, you should see data appear in the Temp Humi field. Also at the bottom of the page, there's a log that shows it's connected. The next step is to hit the do activation button. Once that is successful, it fills in the me token and the me bind key field. With those, you can already use these sensors in ESP Home with Home Assistant with the default firmware. So that is by far the easiest way of doing things. Just copy the bind key. I just mail it to myself because you know, every phone has a mail app now and then I can use it in the ESP Home configuration file that's coming up. But let's also do the optional step, and that is flashing the custom firmware. To do this, we hit the Choose File button and browse for that downloaded ATC thermometer.bin file we downloaded earlier. Make sure to select the correct file. If you didn't, good chances you're going to break that sensor. Okay, hit Start Flashing, and you should see that the blocks and timers are running on the screen. Leave the Leave the phone alone for a little bit. I know it's hard, but just, just leave it for a minute. Scrolling down, we can see the update was successful and it took about 56 seconds. Awesome. Let's see if we can find the sensor after flashing it. Hit the connect button and this time we're looking for an ATC sensor. Hit pair and on the bottom of the page, you can see if you're connected to the module or not. In the middle of the page, there are now a few options you can use to use with ESP Home. For now, we're going to switch the advertising type to me like, since I know that's supported in ESP Home right now. I've noticed this setting doesn't always take, so I just, you know, mash it a few times and then it's always been fine. Next to that, we're going to mash the <laughs> five minute advertising rate a few times too. 
you can always go back later and change these to suit your needs. And that's it. We're done with the phone part already. Next, we're going to jump over to Home Assistant and the new version of ESP Home inside of it. It's important you run the most recent version, 1.5 or higher, because that includes a lot more sensors. This isn't going to be a tutorial from scratch for ESP Home. ESP Home is quite easy. And if you do want more, check out my previous videos, including the one about my older temperature sensor, in which I do go into more detail about ESP Home and how to flash it and stuff like that. There is also a page from ESP Home which lists all sensors that are now uh, working with ESP Home, so I'll make sure to have that linked in the description. And as always, I'll also have some affiliate links there. If you like my video and want to use those, thank you very much. So, our starting point is an ESP32 I've configured in ESP Home with a basic configuration. The only thing that's special about it is that it has the ESP32 underscore BLE underscore tracker listed in it. And it was initially flashed using that configuration using USB. That's important for some partition stuff they do. I'll make sure to include this basic configuration in my website article if you want to look through it. Once the ESP32 is booted, use the show logs button in the ESP home interface to follow the messages that pass by. At some point, you'll see a device with the ATC name if you flashed it to the new firmware or with the original name, and I don't know what up from, from head, so it'll be somewhere on the screen. And we need those lines that pass by because we need the MAC address that's mentioned in there. It used to be the case that ESP Home would display temperature and humidity broadcast information, but it doesn't anymore, so finding the right sensor is a bit harder. But if you have the custom firmware on there and reboot the sensor with the custom firmware, at least this $4 uh, tiny one does show the last six digits of the MAC address we need. So that can be helpful to find it if you have multiple of them. I do uh, suggest uh, labeling them uh, once you know which MAC address is what. Like for instance, this one came out of my office. Here is an example of the lines we need from the log. And in this case, it found uh, the ATC sensor. So that's one of the sensors running the custom firmware. We need that A4C1381B9697 part. That's an example. Uh, it's probably going to be a different one I'm going to show you in the footage, but that's a MAC address and that's what we need. Hit the stop button to stop showing the log to edit the configuration of this ESP32. There we're going to paste the following. Again, this is available in my uh, linked article in the description, so you can find it there. It doesn't matter if you're using the custom firmware or the original firmware, just paste the same lines and for the custom firmware, it doesn't really matter what the bind key says, so just leave this one in there. And for the original firmware, you do have to put the bind key, but we mailed that ourselves earlier, so that's easy. Also, make sure to change the name of the items listed, so temperature, humidity, and battery level, so you can recognize it later, okay? Once that's all done, hit the upload button and wait for it to complete. Now, I know I'm going over this ESP Home stuff a bit quick, but again, check the prior articles and videos about that, and if that really doesn't show you enough, let me know down in the comments, and I've been receiving more comments to do an ESP Home video, but since it's so versatile, I don't really know where to start or what to show. So, yeah. Now, let's add this ESP32 in Home Assistant, and that should automatically make these sensors show up. This procedure is exactly the same as adding any ESP Home module, so I'm going over that pretty quickly. Now, depending on if you're running the original firmware and use the bind key, or you're running the custom firmware, it can take a little bit to start receiving values. Give it at least 10 to 20 minutes. One thing of influence here can be the advertising interval or the temperature changes occurring. Since this is a battery operated device, if no temperature changes are happening, it also won't send any updates. And well, that's it really. We now have a wireless battery operated temperature and humidity sensor that's very small, ultra cheap, and then home assistant. I've compared it to my uh, older sensors, and from what I can see, the measurements are pretty close together, so I think they use the same high quality sensor. Update frequency is a bit lower on the stock firmware, 
Uh, with the custom firmware, you can influence this, so you can either make it a very jagged line or a more fluid line, but I'd imagine it will also have a bit less battery life using the CR2032 coin cell versus the AAA in the bigger module. If you want to do this yourself, Again, make sure to check out the linked blog post in the video description. If you're going to pick up a few of these sensors, my links in the description and in the article are affiliate links, just so you know. And that really does help me out doing this kind of stuff. And well, with that said, questions and comments down in the video comments. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.